welcome back to my channel. So I have made a huge mess, hi Toby, huge mess out here um, today and what I'm doing is I'm preparing my orchids for my orchid babysitters because I am planning a holiday overseas um, next week. We're going to Myanmar for three weeks which I'm very excited about. It is my home country and we um, are taking my partner there for the first time so it should be lots of fun um, my direct family is all going and yeah we're all kind of looking forward to it but in the meantime I have recruited five yes five orchid babysitters um, none of who are familiar with orchids or that familiar with orchids um, and I'm just trying to sort them out into groups uh, to try and keep their sort of care requirements quite similar. So the day we go away, Mr. Toby is going to get dropped off down to the Gold Coast um, and he's going to stay with my partner's other sister who has a Labrador um, and three kids. So I think he'll be pretty happy there, won't you buddy? And um, while we're down there, we're going to drop off my vanders to my partner's mother's place. So she's very kindly offered to look after these guys. And so I will take the whole rack down. She's got a little outdoor um, patio, which I think is east facing. So I've just asked, I'm just going to ask her to pretty much water them down with a hose every morning. Um, yeah, none of these plants are going to be fussed with fertilizer while I'm gone because that's a bit too tricky for people but yeah if she um, goes out and does it early in the morning I don't think we're gonna have any issues with crown rot or anything like that so out of all my orchid babysitters there's only one of them that has any experience with um, orchids and I met her quite randomly at work and uh, she actually um, her parents used to run an orchid nursery and they were one of the first if not the first she said um, to bring in the Phalaenopsis orchid to Australia um, a few decades ago so that's pretty cool and her mum actually created an intergeneric between the Sarcochylus and Phalaenopsis which is a Sarcanopsis and um, she created Sarcanopsis Rita Anderson so yeah that's pretty cool they um they had a lot of species orchids so this friend is getting my species fowls um and i might give you a couple of updates as i go but this is my fowl cornu survey which has a couple of butts coming out there it's pretty cool fowl violacea here is um, growing a new leaf and I just noticed all these crazy new roots as I um, took it out of the pot today so I'm very happy with how she's going. Faluda manana has a little spike emerging there. My Bellina is growing these cool new roots so they're doing pretty well. So along with the species fowls I'm going to give her my frags which um, obviously require um, specific care so they're not tricky they just sit in some distilled water but they're different to in care to other orchids so yeah she'll get those guys um, and she's getting my tricky um, 80 millimeter pots or my tricky little pots so by tricky I mean um, there's some rescues in here, some that need slightly different care, um, and some that are kind of growing new growths or they're quite easy to get um, water in spots you don't want to get water in, like the crown. So um, they need a little bit of specific instruction, but you know, I've got the catacetans which are actively growing here. Um, I've got ones like this guy who is my uh, BC Maikai which I got a few months ago from eBay and it was just potted in this um, co 
coconut husk and all the roots had rotted off and it fell into four pieces in my hand basically. One of them's a single growth, but you can see it's um it's actually doing surprisingly really, really well. It had zero roots, keep in mind, and it is pushing out like so many new growths out of every single cane. Um, this one there, a couple here. You can see that one. There is one there as well. So yeah, um, it obviously needs a little bit of uh, special treatment otherwise because it literally doesn't have any roots. All my friends are actually, oh she, I've put together all my flowering um, fowls and there's a Miltoniopsis and an Oncidium here. There's one back there if you can see. So I'm gonna give each of my friends or my carers <laughs> a couple of flowering orchids as well because well it's just something nice to look at instead of just green because obviously I you know get excited about new leaves and new roots and flower spikes but I highly doubt that any of my orchid babysitters are going to be as excited or probably they won't even know how to keep an eye out for these things so yeah I'll give them some pretty stuff to look at while while they do their jobs this is another tray of more sort of evenly moist um, 80 millimeter pots so we've got my smaller um, model paths here we've got a few dendrobiums some cat layer seedlings um, this is a dendrochylum here um, I've got a tray of smaller potted dendrobiums so a lot of my dendrobiums at the moment are actually in active growth so I don't want to set back their growth too much. I've got a Latoria type here this is um, a dendrobium is it little green apples that's it so it's got this flower spike and it's a first time bloomer you can see how big he actually is um, and how big these canes have grown to actually produce this spike but it's got another one coming up here what else have we got so we've got some more evenly moist bigger pots here with some Melatoniopsis and we've got um, a Doritus a Sideria Japonica back there let me see if I can show you so that spike's developing quite nicely there in the Sideria we've got a Gongora there and a maxilla, another Maxillarius, Maxillaria variabilis, and I've actually recently noticed it started doing something weird here, and as it got bigger, I'm pretty sure that's a flower spike. So we're gonna get one flower out of my Maxillaria variabilis, and the person who's looking after this one will probably get to enjoy this flower. We've got an easy 80 millimeter tray here so we've got some um, seedling paths some seedling fowls got a couple of neophonetias here a couple of seedling dendrobiums so yeah some easy seedlings which should just need watering maybe two or three times a week. These ones are the ones that can sort of maybe dry in between waterings a little bit, so it'll go to maybe my laziest babysitter. Uh, but there's some encyclias. Um, what else have we got? Brassavola. And we've got my mottled puffs and a psychopsis back there and a couple of randoms. How cool do my modelled paths look all lined up like that? Huh. But yeah, obviously these guys will need to be kept fairly evenly moist. So they're in this tray. Some um, oncidiums in 100mm pots here. And some cat layers as well. So I'm going to keep my bigger cat layers um, behind. But the ones in smaller pots 
will just dry out um, and desiccate, I think, if I leave them for three weeks. So they'll have to go to somebody. Um, but yeah, they've been doing okay. So I have um, been trying to climatize them to a bit of direct sun and they've been doing really, really well. But what I didn't um, sort of account for was the new growth and actually sadly I've lost um, a few new growths they've kind of burnt off but I'll show you sort of what's been happening to these growths but you can see there's a growth there and it's very dark so the new growths that were um, under maybe you know a couple of centimeters have pretty much burnt um, and I've lost them but the ones that have survived um, are really really dark so um, when when these growths develop in very high light they sort of produce more anthocyanin which is a pigment um, which the orchid can produce but it's particularly um, helpful for the little new tender growths uh, because it acts as sort of like a, a bit of a sunscreen like a protective um, against UV so they're quite dark and purple so I'm gonna have to bring them all back from the light a little bit um, and even some of the more established new growths that are developing have, have developed that quite dark purple color so you can see on this one, the side of that growth has burnt off a little bit and the new growth on this side, right there, has burnt to a crisp. So yeah, I'm gonna have to move them all back. And the sun's just getting too hot in this position as summer progresses or spring progresses and yeah, I'm just gonna have to take a bit more care moving forward. Up here I've got some um, Stan Hopers, which haven't been doing a whole lot um, over winter, and they're still not doing a whole lot, even though it's gotten a bit warmer. Got one there. This one's the only one that's sort of doing stuff. This is Stan Hoper, um, is it? Let me check. Oculata times Anfracta. And it's got this gorgeous, gorgeous new growth coming up. That leaf, it's doing really well. And there's another little growth developing down there. Um, but these ones will go to um, my partner's other sister who lives in Brisbane. And she has a little um, east facing balcony. So I think they'll enjoy staying up there and they'll start to need probably second daily or even daily watering um, as it continues to warm up just because these net pots dry so quickly. But yeah, that's, um, that's my update for these guys and I would absolutely love to hear from you if you want to put in the comments section down below what you do when you go for two, three, four week holidays. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I'm hoping that by um, putting a bit of time and effort into grouping these orchids into care requirements, you know, hopefully there's no sort of fatalities or hopefully no mass casualties. Um, you know, in my head, the orchids. Um, are relatively easy there's a few nuances obviously with orchids compared to other plants that you need to keep in mind but overall you know watering in my mind doesn't seem that hard but at the same time I'm going to show you this this plant so I can keep 200 orchids alive but I managed to kill a cactus so yeah go figure well I might post another update later in the week with um, what I'm doing with my homestaying orchids but 
these are the ones that are going to my orchid babysitters and I'm very very lucky to have five people that will look after my plants. It does require a bit of effort and work on my part to distribute them but I am so so grateful. But yeah, give me a thumbs up for this video if you enjoyed it. I would love to hear your comments as I mentioned down below and um, make sure you subscribe to my channel if you want to see more orchid videos and yeah, I'll see you guys later in the week. Um, happy growing until then. Bye.